this video will walk you through the different components of Webables and some different functions you have as far as how to score and how to pull in data into some reports. Now, what you're seeing on the screen right now is the dashboard. This is the first thing that you're going to see as soon as you log in. On the left hand side, the first thing you'll see is the support center access. So this gives you the ability to come in and search for a particular topic or scroll through and see any of the topic articles that already exist. You also have access here to the support team for Webables. You can contact them right from the platform. And then the last thing you'll see here is the toolkit. Now the toolkit will give you access to some helpful files as you are using Webables, um, particularly the appendix document. So if you're using the, the Ables R manual now, all of those lists that are so helpful when we're running the assessment are all listed here. Other things that you can do on the dashboard is change your language. So Web Ables is available in English or Spanish. And then you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner, there are some resources listed here. These are all PDFs uh, that will give you helpful information as you are getting used to using Web Ables. And then there is a question and answer section as well. So from here, I'm gonna move over into my students. On the student list, I can not only see students that I'm currently assessing or maybe have assessed in the past, but I can also see students that have been shared with me. Um, so within WebAbles, you do have the ability to share profile information to other supervisors or other clinicians or other teachers who might need access to that information. So I'm just gonna choose the student we wanna look at and then it will be brought to his summary screen. On the screen, I can see any assessments that have been completed or are still in progress. I can also see reports and worksheets that have been generated for this particular student, as well as any analytical reports that have been generated. Now, when it's time to actually score the assessment, you have three different views in which you can score from. So you can decide which one you prefer. Um, I'll start with the grid view. This is probably the view that we are all most familiar with and used to seeing, uh, particularly as we're doing this on pen and paper. So here is the total grid. This is a great view to see you know, where your student has been, what progress has been made, but this is also a view you can use to score the information. So if I just click on a particular item, you'll see it brings open the task info box, which tells you what the item is. It gives you your scoring criteria. You can see an objective for this task as well as a question to ask to help you be able to score. You'll also see you've got some information in these gray boxes at the top. You can see video. So for over 250 testing items within WebAbles, there are video models attached. Um, so you can watch that if that better clarifies for you how to test the item. You also can see scores that have been entered for this item. You can see any notes that have been entered. And then of course you could add notes from here as well. Um, so that's option one, as far as how you want to score. You also have the ability to see this in a text version. The text version will just break apart each individual item within a category, give you that same criteria. You can score from this page as well. Your third option is to score from the category section. So that will show you every item in that category. And again, just like on that grid view, if you click on the testing item, it brings open that info box and you can see all of that information. Now, each time you click to put in a score, you'll see here this yellow exclamation point will appear on the right hand side. What this is doing is just prompting me to save information. So WebAbles will not automatically save it for you, uh, but it will prompt you each time you make changes to an assessment to save those changes. So we're gonna fast forward now into uh, the event that we have now scored all of our ABLES and we're ready to pull this information into reports. So I'm gonna select that total grid view and then as a supervisor, as a teacher, I'm gonna decide which one of these items are we ready to actually tackle in our sessions. So I'm just coming in and highlighting the items that I want to now work on. So I'm just gonna highlight each one of these. So we'll just pull in a few items into a program worksheet. Now the program worksheet can be generated right here under that action box. And that's gonna show you the objective from each one of those tasks um, what the current score is for the task. I can see the scoring criteria, and then I can type in notes about the current level, and then I can also put in any programming notes. Now, similar to the program worksheet, you can also generate a progress report. You'll see they look very similar. The difference is now I can note what the previous level was and what the current level is, as well as take any notes that I need to. Now, from here, I can also add analysis. 
um, and so this is the fun part. We can start to decide how do we want all of the scoring criteria presented in a report format. Um, so I'm now on the analysis page for this particular student. The first thing I can do is decide, do I want to include both assessments that have been done or do I just want to look at one? Uh, so maybe in this example, we'll just look at one assessment. So now we're going to decide on this table analysis, do we want to just look at one or compare multiple? So we'll just look at a single assessment. And then I can come down and decide how many sections do I want to look at? Um, so I can look at one section, I can look at multiple sections, or I can look at the entire assessment. So I'll just choose this language and learner section. And you'll see when I click on that, it automatically check mark each of the um, particular categories that are included in that section. I can also bring in normative data. So if I select yes, I want to do that. I'm just going to enter this particular student's um, chronological age so that it can pull in data uh, from typically developing peers. So I can see right within my graphs, how is my student doing versus how other students of that uh, particular age are doing. Next, I'm going to come down and I'm going to include how I want to look at this. So I've got different ways that I can look either at section graphs or category graphs. So I'm just going to select category graphs. I'm going to save my analysis. And then I'll come back to this analysis page and you'll see I have the options to decide which one of these reports I want to look at. Um, so the table analysis is the first option. And you'll see within that table, it will break it down by category. It will show you how many items are available, how many this student has completed versus what's emerging, how many of the items we scored at zero. Um, and so you can use this information if you needed it to bring into a report. You also can then look at graphs. Um, so the way that the graphs are going to work, again, I selected to look at things by category. So I'm looking at what has been completed for this student versus what's still emerging. And then in this brown box, this is showing me that normative data. So any other student who is the same chronological age as this one, um, this is what they're scoring. And then this last box shows me the total items possible to be scored. Now from here, if I wanted to pull this into a report, I'm going to select generate this uh, docx report. So basically it's going to take this information, put it into a Word document for you. You'll see there is some narrative here about the assessment itself and then how this particular student did, but I also can now see my graphs. Any of this information can be copy and pasted from here. Um, so this is a Word document. You can manipulate it as you want to. If you wanted to change any of the narrative or you wanted to add more information, you can do that too. We hope this has been a helpful walkthrough of WebAbel's. And of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.